Fox Business. Well, New York Senator and presidential candidate Hillary Clinton talking about her stimulus ideas right here on this network just a little while ago. She says she wants to put cash in the hands of Americans struggling to pay their bills. Listen up. We've got a weak housing market. We've lost 6% of housing wealth in the last year, 12% here in Nevada, which is leading the country in home foreclosures. The $30 billion fund would be an adjunct to the moratorium and the freeze. But I also have $25 billion going directly into the hands of Americans who are having trouble paying their energy costs. What I propose does put $650 into the hands of millions of Americans to deal with their energy costs, tries to save people's homes from being foreclosed on, and give communities some help. So is that the right way to get the economy moving? Our own Elizabeth McDonald joins us along with Mike Norman of the Economic Economic Contrarian Update. And you're on Brook from the Ayn Rand Institute and Peter Schiff, author of Crash Proof. Uh, so, Yaron, let me go to you first because you wrote something about stimulus packages that I was reading, suggesting that the economy needs to be liberated, not stimulated. Explain. Yeah, what we need is not some short-term solution. We don't need... Uh, you know, these short-term tax breaks that we're going to have to pay for later. We don't need checks sent to consumers. What we need is the cause of these economic problems to go away. And the cause has always been government intervention, government spending, government regulation. I would love to see somebody propose repealing Sarbanes-Oxley as, as one way to stimulate this economy. What we need is more business activity, more job creation, get the government out of the way and let business, businesses do their job of making money, creating jobs, creating wealth. That's what a healthy economy All right, so needs, Elizabeth, not which these would, temporary things. Which would you take, Euron's uh, solution or Hillary's? I, I would take Euron's. And, you know, I would, I would also And you argue, like Hillary, and I, I think that Hillary has been pretty uh, strong and, and, you know, very not assertive in coming out with a fiscal stimulus plan of her own. I think, you know, that's courageous to do that in, right now. I, but what I would do is cut corporate taxes. Because let's face it, companies never pay corporate taxes. Investors and, uh, you know, Let me just stop clients, you right there. Why, how do they avoid? They, they, they basic, basically pass it along to customers. They pass it along to investors. But ac academics are now saying more than, more than those groups. Uh, workers get it in the neck. It's probably behind the reason why you see stagnant wage growth. And you know, what's, what's striking to me is that in the fiscal stimulus plans, you see the deficit hawks getting trampled. I think Aaron is absolutely right. The guardrails are off when it comes to spending. We spend $400 billion annually on our $9 trillion deficit alone. That's north of the GDP of Saudi Arabia. So, you know, he's right about, <laughs> about shrinking regulation, okay. although I do think we Wall move Street this needs some, uh, some Mike, more Mike, even watchdogs. Democrats, I'm thinking of Charlie Rangel in particular, the, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, said that perhaps they could agree on some kind of lowering of corporate tax. Would that be a good stimulus? Yeah, I think it would be a good stimulus. Look, I don't even know we need a stimulus at this point, to be honest with you. Because really? You just talked about the fact, and I think it's correct to point out that what the Fed said from the Beige Book That's is true. that, and it's highly anticipated that fourth quarter would be a negative number on GDP. It's probably coming in one and a half. Depending on exports, it could be revised up to two. We might not be in bad shape. We just saw mortgage applications jump to a five-month high mm -hmm. in the recent survey, okay? Mortgage, uh, uh, what is it, uh, interest rates now down to a very low level. Uh, very little housing being created. New housing now. A million new homes with a 300 million population. All right. Well, Peter, Peter, Mike, your friend Mike Norman brings up a very good point. Perhaps a stimulus plan, at least the ones where you pay out these rebates, have never worked particularly well in the past. We had one in 1974 with President Ford. We had one in 2001 with President Bush. As of 2003, that rebate didn't work, and the one in 74 didn't work. So why should one work now? Well, it's not. I mean, I might agree with Mike, but for the wrong reasons or different reasons. I think we're, we're going to be in a recession. I think we're already in a recession. But I think the last thing we need is the government to stimulate more consumption. The reason we're in this mess in the first place is because we already had too many of these stimulus packages that got Americans borrowing and spending money they didn't have. What we need to do is start saving money. Hillary says we've got to put more money in people's pockets to spend it. No, we don't. They need to find a way to spend less, to make a budget, to give up things that they don't need. We need to start saving. Sure, we're going to have a recession. We can't do anything about that. That. That's the price we pay we, for all this excess we, consumption of the past. We save more than any country in the no, world. We don't. Wait a second. We have a 57 trillion positive net worth, which is but that's that, asset Mike, wait, inflation. That, no, no, that's not asset inflation. It's our assets minus our liabilities. Look, the assets Mike, that we own as a nation is the accounting record of our yeah, savings. And Mike, by the way, if we had all the savings, second, it Peter, wouldn't be the even that, even, Hold on, Peter. Let me make this one. Hold on, Peter.
Peter, hold on, Peter. Go ahead, finish your point. Even that monthly number that we see uh, from the Bureau of Economic uh, Analysis of personal income minus personal outlays, that has recently turned positive. It's been positive for a year, so this is flat out. Mikey, just prove my point when you said it is assets minus liabilities, but let's move on. Mario Gabelli said it right, and I agree with Peter that, you know, the consumers went over the cliff without even tapping the brake. He's absolutely right, and I have to say, the the Fed should have seen that the economy is slowing down. November 2001, it held interest rates too low for three years. Yes. That that helped consumers on this, you know, this spending binge. And like alcoholics, you know, we are now dealing with. But, but, well, with hold the on demand. a second. Hold on. Let me bring in another element. Yaron, we, today we have uh, an announcement. Well, it's going to come out in Sunday in the New York Times Magazine. This interview with, with uh, among other people, Paul Volcker, who was Fed chairman, who said that yes, there were all of these bubbles, not only the housing bubble that was created with these low interest rates, but then the dot com bubble, et cetera, uh, suggesting that that Mr. Greenspan has a lot to answer for. What do you say? Well, I think the Federal Reserve has a lot to answer for. I mean, go back to the you know, to the recession, to the 1987 crash and the recession in the early 90s and the Internet bubble. These are all caused by the Fed policy, by missing on interest rates, either too low or too high. Because the Fed inherently, we've talked about this before on the show, the Fed inherently cannot do a good job. It can only mess things up. Uh, you know, ideally, long term, I'd like to see us getting away from a Federal Reserve, suddenly short term, oh, get away silly. from the Federal Reserve, setting Look, interest I, rates. I, I have, okay, to, got re 10 I have to rebut quickly. this nonsense quickly. that uh, spending is no spending equals income to vendors and producers. They then turn around, they hire workers, they pay their salaries, they invest in their business. It's a circular flow into the economy. <laughs> you got to rebut that argument. Thank books. goodness. Well, the subprime is <laughs> spreading so to other forms economics. of credit, including auto loans. Will the trend put a dent in car sales? We're going to be talking to the nation's largest retailer of new and used vehicles next on Fox Business.